Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. A thousand Palestinians face expulsion in Masafar Yatta. Honduran judge approves extradition of former president and Starbucks workers detail union busting in official complaint. Over 1,000 Palestinians in Masafar Yatta in the occupied West Bank are at imminent risk of forced expulsion. The rural area is located in Area C, which is under full civil and military control of the Israeli occupation. It is now trying to expel Palestinians by claiming it as Military Firing Zone 918. Masafar Yatta is home to around 20 Palestinian villages where the primary mode of livelihood is sheep herding and agriculture. On March 15th, the Israeli High Court of Justice held another hearing on petitions against expulsions targeting eight villages. It is expected to rule on the matter soon. Palestinian families in the area have been facing the occupation's onslaught and demolitions for decades. It claims that the residents of Masafar Yatta are trespassers with no rights to the land. Forced transfers and the use of an occupied territory, which benefits only the occupier, are illegal under international law. The families have also rejected so-called compromise proposals presented by Israel. Documents from the 1980s show that the express purpose of firing zones and training centers was to stop, and I quote, the expansion of Arab villagers from the hills. In 1999, the occupation army and administration forcibly expelled over 700 Palestinians from their homes. Structures, including residences and water cisterns, have been declared illegal, making them subject to regular demolitions. On March 14, the Israeli military issued demolition and stop work orders against a school and eight structures. The villagers are also banned from being connected to water and electricity grids. We now move to Honduras, where a court has authorized the extradition of former President Juan Orlando Hernandez to the United States. The Supreme Court of Justice issued the ruling on March 16. U.S. authorities have accused Hernandez of participating in a drug trafficking scheme between 2004 and 2022. He has also been accused of accepting millions of dollars in bribes in exchange for protecting traffickers from prosecution and extradition to the United States. He is also facing charges of carrying, using, or aiding and abetting the use of weapons. Hernandez will have three days to appeal the court's ruling. He was arrested by Honduran National Police in Tegucigalpa on February 15. He has since been in detention. Hernandez was in office from January 2014 to 2022 before being unseated by progressive candidate Xiomara Castro. Her husband and former president, Manuel Zelaya, was ousted in a U.S.-backed coup in 2009. After this, Hernandez's right-wing National Party remained in power, with Hernandez remaining a key U.S. ally and advocate in the region. His rule continued after the election in 2017, which was marked by widespread fraud. His name first came up during the drug trafficking trial of his younger brother, Juan Antonio, in the United States last year. The Honduran people have been denouncing Hernandez's crime for years. The country also witnessed mass protests in 2019 under the slogan, Get Out, Narco Dictator. And finally, an official complaint has been filed against major coffee corporation Starbucks for union busting. Starbucks Workers United has filed charges with the U.S. National Labor Relations Board. The complaint states that the company has cut workers' hours in response to workplace organizing efforts countrywide. The union is seeking an immediate injunction against this practice. The NLRB has found that Starbucks violated federal labor law by surveilling and retaliating against union supporters. It found that the company suspended one employee and gave her a written warning. Another worker's preference for a work schedule was rejected in an attempt to discourage others from unionizing. Starbucks Workers United has filed over 20 such complaints of union busting and unfair labor practices. A survey conducted by the union showed that workers lost anywhere between 2 and 15 hours from their schedule each week. Starbucks policy dictates that a worker must work at least 20 hours a week to be eligible for benefits. The cutting of hours has been documented in at least 20 states. This is pushing workers towards constructive dismissal or being forced to take second jobs. 
According to More Perfect Union, Starbucks Workers United has organized over 130 stores across 27 states. Workers have voted to unionize at six different locations already. Elections are scheduled for next month in New York, Virginia, Arizona and Pennsylvania. Meanwhile, Starbucks is bringing back former CEO Howard Schultz, who is notorious for union busting. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.